Welcome to our intro to these smart IFPs in three minutes or so. First of all, they do have a remote, but many people won't ever need it because down here in the corner there's a series of physical buttons that do all the main functions and that you can't lose. So I want to tell you about a few of those. First one, this one. This is the power button. And guess what? You press that, the screen will come on. If it doesn't show what you expect it to show, probably the output of your computer, then you need this button. This is the inputs button. And when you press that, get this menu up. If you select HDMI 1, that will take you over to the output from your PC. I want to tell you about a third button now. This is the pause button, or the freeze button as you might call it. And you can press that and guess what? It freezes the screen. But this comes with an extra. Any time you're in freeze mode, if you pick up the pen, you can start to draw on the screen. Which one do I have to click, miss? It's this one. How do I spell that? Like this. Whatever it is that you need to do. Uh, also, while you're in that mode, you can use your fist or your palm to erase. There's also some simple tools here for things like changing the colour and the thickness of the pen. Now this tool is built in to the screen so it doesn't depend on the connection to the PC it will work over whatever's on the screen at any time. Uh, it will be super reliable so hopefully you'll all find this useful when you need to emphasise something on screen. And as soon as you press that freeze button it just disappears. It's gone. If you want to go a bit further, do use the screen as a slightly more advanced whiteboard, but still use something super reliable, pretty simple. You press that input button again, and you choose Smart MX3. This is basically a phone built into the screen, and it's got some apps on it that you might find useful, one of which is this whiteboard app. Uh, in this, you can again start drawing on the screen, and it's got a bit more advanced controls in terms of picking the colour, and the thickness of your pen uh, so that you can draw and write, you can do uh, arrows, you can do shapes, all sorts of things. You can also, if you want to, you can start selecting uh, from some pre-made backgrounds you can create your own. Uh, but this is a bit more advanced because if you go onto this arrow here then you can move the whole thing around or you can select individual items and move them around, you can zoom them to a different size um, if, you want to, if you want to select nothing at all, you can zoom the whole lot, shift it out of the way, so that you give yourself some more room to continue over here. Uh, here, there's some controls for adding extra pages or clearing what you've done. Uh, quite an effective whiteboarding tool, but again, built in, dead simple. If you press here, it takes you to a menu from the phone that's built into the screen and another thing this has got is this which is a browser and uh, so for example if you want to show a video to your students while you use your PC for something else you could bring it up in this simple browser uh, and you can play the YouTube video you can maximize it as usual and in even here the pause tool that lets you start drawing over things does work. Uh, if we go back to our inputs and we go back to Windows again, oh I've got it frozen of course, we go back to our inputs and we go back to Windows again. If you pick up your pen in Windows without freezing the board then you can start to draw using this tool that's built into Windows and this is capable of doing an awful lot. We're going to have some more training about it in a few weeks. But it does things like you can annotate in each different tab separately and the annotations will stay there. You can clear everything on one page very easily using this tool up here. Um, and there's a full-on whiteboarding tool there. As I say, more training coming in a few weeks time. Um, final tip I want to give you is I want to tell you that uh, there are three volume controls, if you think about it. There's the one down here on the screen. There's the one built into Windows by the clock. And if you're showing a YouTube video, there is, of course, one with the video itself. So if you're trying to change the volume, remember, you might have to turn up any of those three that could be turned down. 
Uh, if you do want to take the Windows side of it further before we have the training, I highly recommend this Smart Support channel on YouTube. Uh, it's very, it's got lots of stuff that they've provided. So I hope you're going to find these screens good. They are bright, they are clear, they have this super simple built-in annotation tool that I think should be useful to nearly everybody. And I hope this, inf this video gives you enough information to get started with your new screen.